All right. <clears throat> Very good. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, our family is camping this weekend up at uh, Kennessee Grand River Valley, which is uh, up here in uh, Geneva area. They advertised uh, strong Wi-Fi, but it was not the case. So this morning, it's uh, trekked over to their event hall, and uh, that's where I'm coming to you from today. So we got rain this morning, and uh, it's been very interesting. So we'll see how church goes this morning with all that being the case, but uh, hopefully we're all set up and ready to go. So I appreciate uh, y'all being here and uh, logging in. Pastor Kim is also uh, taking one of her residents to visit a sibling of hers this morning, so she is not with us this morning, so uh, I will be myself and Pastor Kim all in one today, if that's possible. All right, let's check and make sure, uh, if you're not muted already, I guess check and make sure that you are, or can be. Let's see here. All right, looking good. Very good. Well, follow along uh, like usual. Uh, I just uploaded a little bit ago because of the shoddy Wi-Fi here. So uh, HarmonySprings.org slash virtual dash gathering has the order of service today and the second page with announcements and things going on. Uh, we will partake in communion as we always do as our with our gathering here at Harmony Springs. So gather those supplies if you haven't already to partake in the communion elements at the end of our service here this morning. All right. Well, In this odd way that we've been worshiping together as Harmony Springs Christian Church, we do it again, knowing that your spirit is more powerful than any pandemic or uh, any of our separations, no matter when and where they happen, you can bring us together. Your spirit has a mighty way of doing that. And today we acknowledge that again, as we again together come here to be together and to hear from your spirit. And so gracious God, today we lift up to you each person here and not here with us. For those who are hospitalized because of the pandemic, we ask for your kindness and care and patience, for your healing presence to be with those who need it even now this day. For those in our own community of faith here who have been in and out of the hospital and who have been facing health challenges, we lift them up to you even now as well. God, we ask that you might guide and direct our gathering here this morning as we open our hearts to you and ask for your spirit to speak to us so that we may dig deep into our souls and reflect on who we are and who you want us to be. We give thanks this day for Harmony Springs Christian Church and all of the folks who are a part of it who form this great community of faith. Loving and gracious God, guide and direct us as we gather online this morning. May your name be lifted up and may our hearts be open to you. We pray all of these things as we pray pray together the words you taught us to pray so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, friends, we have this morning a new virtual choir song and presentation, Be Thou My Vision, uh, that Terry has put together and so many of our choir members have recorded their parts and put together in a virtual choir presentation. Here's the Harmony Springs virtual choir, Be Thy, Be Thou My Vision. Good job, Harmony Springs Choir, Harmony Sings Choir, sorry. We're in the last week of the sermon series that I've been preaching. We've, believe it or not, uh, maybe you can believe it since we've read the same scripture for this many weeks, the fifth and final week of a series called Becoming Neighbors, where we've read through each week the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan that Jesus tells when prompted by a question. So here again is the inclusive Bible version of that parable found in Luke 10 of the Good Samaritan. An expert of the law stood up to put Jesus to the test and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? Jesus answered, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The expert of the law replied, You must love the Most High God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, You've answered correctly. Do this, and you'll live. But the expert on the law, seeking self-justification, pressed Jesus further. And just who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, There was a traveler going down from Jerusalem to Jericho who fell prey to robbers. The traveler was beaten, stripped naked, and left half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. The priest saw the traveler 
lying beside the road, but passed by on the other side. Likewise, there was a Levite who came the same way. This one, too, saw the afflicted traveler and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was taking the same road also came upon the traveler and filled with compassion, approached the traveler and dressed the wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then the Samaritan put the wounded person on a donkey, went straight to an inn, and there took care of the injured one. The next day, the Samaritan took out two silver pieces and gave them to the innkeeper with, the, with this request. Look after this person, and if there is any further expense, I'll repay you on the way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was the neighbor to the traveler who fell in with the robbers? The answer came, the one who showed compassion. And Jesus replied, then go and do the same. Here ends the reading of God's word. May God add his blessing to this reading. For the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. Amen. Well, week five, we have read now this scripture five times. I wonder if you, like me, have heard something stand out each week as we've read through this scripture, or maybe you've heard it so many times growing up in church and Sunday school that it all seems the same by now. Something interesting about the scriptures and especially Jesus's stories, it seems that every time we read through them, there's something a little bit different for us to learn or to glean from the meaning and Jesus's intention. And over these last few weeks, we've done just that, haven't we? We started with uh, the question that prompted this story in the first place. The one who asks it is uh, someone knowledgeable in the scriptures. And there's some inkling that this person was trying to sort of get Jesus, like so many other times in the scriptures in the New Testament we read, uh, trying to put him on the spot to see how he would answer. And Jesus always has an amazing way of wiggling out of those on the spot moments and usually ends up telling some story to make his point, doesn't he? The question that started this all out, how do I fully live in this life? How do I fully live into the realm of God? How do I have eternal life? And then the follow-up question, after giving a pretty good answer, back to Jesus's question, who is my neighbor? In week two, we talked about the traveler and the traveler's self. It's interesting that in this inclusive version, looking at the translation, the Greek here, the inclusive version decided to just call the person a person. Making, I think, a similar point to what we talked about on week two, that any of us could be that person at any given time. We're uh, two car mufflers away from having a having been stretched too far or fill in the blank right uh, we could all be laying in the ditch half beaten up at any time it doesn't take much does it and then in week three we talked about how becoming a neighbor is a way of being not necessarily an obligation or a moral obligation the way we often read into this story that we should be kind to others around us because it's the right thing to do it is the right thing to do, and we teach our children it is the right thing to do, right? But it's uh, as we journey in our faith together, we in our lives, we realize that it's more than just what we learned when we were kids. It's more than just being nice to a friend or being nice to someone. It's a way of living. Becoming neighbor is a way of being that we grow into in our lives as we mature, don't we? And then last week, we talked about how so often in this world, there are places where we expect kindness to be found, one of those being the church and religious people. But this story points out an important point for us to swallow, which is that so often we religious people can miss the boat altogether. We end up walking along the other side of the road when we should be stopping and helping. God often, though, is at work in unexpected ways and with unexpected people. 
we religious people sometimes need to get over ourselves and just see it where it is and take it for what it is and join in God's working in the world. Even when the people doing that good work may not be our favorite people or the people we most easily get along with, right? This last week though, I wanna focus on the very end of the story, which I think is the point of the story. So much time and uh, such a high percentage of the story that Jesus tells involves just detailing how the Samaritan stopped and helped. And we've talked about over the weeks how the people that would have been the Jewish people that would have been hearing this parable of Jesus, Samaritans weren't their favorite people, right? They were the people who lived next door, the neighbors that nobody liked uh, in more than one way of speaking. They were similar enough that they pushed all the wrong buttons for a long, long time with the Jews. And division uh, had taken place over a long period of time, and it was deep and well-rooted. And it's no mistake that Jesus uses a Samaritan as the one who stops here on the road to help this unnamed person. The Samaritan was moved by compassion, but it's so interesting to me as we conclude this series and this focus on this parable, how many verses are recorded here by the gospel writer Luke uh, in the actions that the Samaritan took. In verse 33, it starts out by saying, a Samaritan who was taking the same road came upon the same traveler and filled with compassion, approached the traveler and dressed his wounds, poured oil and wine. And then more than just helping him where he was, he loaded him up on his donkey, right? On, uh, on this person's donkey and went straight to a place where he knew this person would be cared for, a nearby inn. And then more than just helping him where he was and taking him to an inn nearby to be cared for, to make sure that he was looked after, he could have probably stopped there. The Samaritan could have probably done his good deed just dressing wounds and dropping him off with someone who would continue to care for him. But he continues on and told the innkeeper, do whatever it takes, anything it takes to keep this person alive, do it, and I will pay everything that is owed when I come back. Three sort of different and distinct ways the Samaritan helps. Helps the person right where they are, when they're hurting, right? That's a calling. It's our calling as the church also. And then it takes them even more steps further, carries them to where they need to be to get the help they need, right? I think Jesus reminds us through this story that that is also our job as people of faith, as people who are becoming neighbors. And then checks in on them later and makes sure to help them through all the way through. After hearing this description of the Samaritan and how much the Samaritan did, Jesus turns back to the crowd and the one who answered this question to begin with and says, uh, so who of these who of these three is or is acting like or is becoming neighbor? After a story like that, there's only one answer, right? And the answer came, verse 37 says, the one who showed compassion. It seems that compassion is an expansive word. It means helping people when they're hurting. It means helping dress up wounds. It means taking them and helping them get to where they need to go and then checking back in on them again and helping them along the way. Compassion looks a lot of different ways in a lot of different times. Uh, it's that sort of word that's hard to pin down to one specific thing. It was probably difficult for that one asking this question to swallow, right? Because we realize that everyone is neighbor. Everyone deserves compassion. And then Jesus said to them and to us, go and do the same. Go and do the same. Go and do likewise. I was reading one a uh, final blogger reflecting on this story that I want to share with you on uh, it's found at journeywithjesus.net and 
it says this. In telling the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus flips the man's question. The right question is not, who is my neighbor? Rather, the right question is, who acted like a neighbor? Once again, the expert knows the right answer, the one who had mercy. But the story ends here, and we never learn if he moved from being right to showing mercy. In his speech, this blogger writes, I've been to the mountaintop, Martin Luther King Jr. put it this way, the priest and the Levite ask, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But then the good Samaritan came by and he reversed the question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? It seems that that's the journey of following Jesus, of living in the way of Jesus, put in a nutshell, isn't it? The longer I live and attempt to do my best to follow Jesus, the more I realize that following Jesus is just putting ourselves aside and focusing on the needs of others time after time after time after time again. It's not an easy thing to do, and it's something we have to do over and over and over again. It's why we go to church, I think, a lot of times, because we need to be reminded that the world does not revolve around us. This is God's realm and God's world. And if we really want to live in it, I think this parable shows us, if we really want to live the most full life, we have to be aware of the needs of others. We have to be moved by compassion and mercy and we have to do it. It's more than knowing, it's doing, isn't it? Knowing and doing are two completely separate things when it comes to our self-centeredness versus becoming a neighbor. And when we know better, we do better. Time after time after time. It's what we strive for as a church at Harmony Springs. We have to, I think, continually be reminded, any church does, that the world does not revolve around us. And our great calling together as people committed to following in the way of Jesus, to living in the way of Jesus. Our great calling is to become neighbors to all who we may become, uh, who may enter our midst, or who we may walk by on the street in this journey in life. It's not easy to do, but it's a calling that we can all strive for. May we all be moved by compassion. It's hard these days, isn't it? It seems that our pand the pandemic that we're continuing to deal with has made us numb to the hurts and struggles in this world. We can easily, especially these days, become overwhelmed by all the bad and evil and struggle and need in this world. And yet Jesus tells the story that we read again and reminds us we don't have to solve all of the world's problems. Sometimes it's just one person's problems on a road that we can help with. And for sure, we should. May it be so for you and I in this time of COVID that's so difficult, I think, uh, so easy to become numb to the world's hurts and concerns. May we continue to strive forward by living in the way of Jesus with compassion. It's the calling of the Good Samaritan. May we go and do likewise. Amen. Amen. And amen. Friends, when I was in chaplaincy education at uh, Cleveland Clinic Hospital just recently, most of last year, um, we were taught something really, really important that, you know, we can we can live our lives and feel for all sorts of people in their predicaments and, all, and, and people in their space. We can say, I'm so sad that that happened to you. And I'm so sorry that you feel that way. Or I'm so, you know, um, really that ends up being pity for somebody and their situation, and it turns them into an, an object, an object of pity, an object of our, our emotion. But compassion and true compassion, we use that word so often in, in church and in, in our circle here. And true compassion really is um, feeling with someone. It's sharing in that emotion and saying, I really wish I could take this away from you. And it's in that compassion and true deep compassion I wish I could take it away from you that they act on the Good Samaritan story. Um, 
And that turns it into a relationship between two people rather than us just feeling something for someone else. When we read a story on Facebook or we hear a story of someone that we don't know, we can feel really sad for them and we can pity their story, but we don't have that relationship and we can't feel true compassion for their space very easily. So I just ask you to, to ponder that a little bit this week and what does that mean for you and how does that come out in your life? Uh, are you feeling more pity? I found that I was feeling more pity than compassion and now I see the difference and now I can, I can be different. When you know different, you do. When you know better, you do better, right? Thank you, Maya Angelou. And um, so that's what I wanted to share. We move on to our time of communion, so feel free to gather your supplies as we go. Let us remember that the Lord Jesus on the night he gave himself for us, took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now we have a word of prayer from Jenny Murphy. Good morning, neighbors, whoever you will be as you pass through my life. On this Labor Day weekend, please take a moment to prepare your hearts and minds for prayer and communion. We pray because we believe in the power of prayer. We pray because we have no doubt you will answer our prayers. Dear gracious and almighty God, I know you have amazing plans for us. Thank you for giving each and every one of us a calling, skills, and ta talents to be able to work in your name. We praise you for giving us confidence, for you having it all together, and for showing us that you are with us in all the circumstances. Teach us what it looks like to work for you and not for ourselves. Thank you for giving us an opportunity for peace. Show us each day what a faithful kingdom looks like by appreciating those that we work with and are involved in our life. For those employed, Lord, we are grateful. For those overemployed, Lord, we pray for rest. For those underemployed, Lord, we pray for increase. For those unemployed, Lord, we pray for breakthrough. For those retired, Lord, we pray for peace. I ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the table of the Lord is ready. There is room for all and there is enough for all. I invite you to take your elements, eat and drink together as a church. I'm afraid we're all too numb to know that life is the greatest thing that we've been given. Just a moment's all it takes for us to cry, then go about the ways we're living. All the pain your brother feels you'll never know If you never take the time to ask him A little girl just rode a bike outside my window I couldn't help but worry what could happen 
Cause just the other day my neighbor fought with someone Just for walking on his precious piece of land And down the road I heard a woman cry and help me Cause her husband lost his school again In a moment everything could fall apart But we waste our precious time on fighting Over who's in charge of what the law should be I couldn't hear you over all that gunfire Why is a family shot inside a store for shopping? For some food to go and help feed the poor And why you arguing a girl has just been murdered By her brother who was angry at the world While you wait for a change, take a moment for your brother while you wait for peace, go ahead and drop your sword Cause all the history we've been fixing, all the lives that we're left missing Will never mean a thing if we never feel the pain I'm afraid we're all too numb to know that love Is the greatest thing that we could give Just a moment's all it takes for one to know But it seems we're all far too busy While a son is being punished by his father Telling him that he has feelings for a man And a girl is being beaten by a stranger Just a man who couldn't have his way Let us have a word of prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for coming to us in the remembrance of this meal, in the remembrance of your time here on earth. We pray that we may move forward with compassion for each other. May we see the moments that we need to step out and act and do something for another person. May we recognize also that sometimes that just equals a smile a word of encouragement, some of our time to listen, to pray, or to serve directly with and for that person. May we recognize those moments. Will you bring that to our mind and have us see it and then be so bold as to act upon it? We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, a few things to let you know about going on this week. Uh, we've been working in the garden on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. You're always welcome to come and join us, uh, pull some weeds, pick some produce, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We've been uh, donating that produce to Green Good Neighbors as it's been coming in, uh, but you're also welcome to come and help yourself to some of that on Wednesday mornings uh, as we continue to uh, harvest things that are ready to be picked. Uh, Jennifer, you want to say anything else about the garden work on Wednesday mornings? We donated approximately, um, I think it was 12 pounds the first week. We donated almost that amount, or harvested, I'm sorry, harvested 
that amount the first week and approximately that amount the second week. We have donated over half of that so far after people have uh, taken what they want. Um, it's an easy job. So if you would like to join us on Wednesday, come on over. You can grab some of those green beans, some zucchini, and uh, help us bag them up for Green Good Neighbors. That's nine o'clock Wednesday. Thank you. Sounds good. Very good. Uh, we have a leadership meeting also coming up on Tuesday. Uh, we're sort of excited to be able to finally be uh, have an in-person leadership meeting. So uh, some folks are going to bring some snacks and drinks and we're going to enjoy ourselves uh, in our first, I guess, uh, meeting in the building. Dennis, Shannon. Um, I would just like to ask if there's going to be a call in option because I'll be out of town with work. And I also not to be a wet blanket, but uh, are we OK to do that since we don't have an occupancy permit yet? I think we can uh, we have been having our staff meetings there, so I think a small gathering is OK. We have enough tables and chairs, so. Uh, I think we're okay. And yes, I will uh, make sure that we have a way for you to call in. And okay, that's going to be the future, right? So we got to get it figured out. Uh, yeah. Being and in person channel, and channel, channel will represent, but uh, I'll be out of town. Yeah. Work. And I would just ask um, since, uh, um, you know, we have to uh, lead from the top, uh, let's clean up after ourselves when we're done. Put the tables and chairs away. <laughs> There you go. It's a whole new world for us with our own building. Uh, we have to actually clean up after ourselves uh, these days. I've gotten, as a parent, I've gotten pretty good at cleaning up after uh, other people. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you made me think of something. Oh, uh, I did send uh, a few updates on the building, I guess. I did send Dustin an email this morning to ask uh, because we heard from the administrative assistant who sent us our what she thought might be our last invoice that he was uh, calling for final inspections on our building. And it may have taken place uh, at the end of the week on Friday. So we'll see. I want to confirm with him on that. But uh, other things going on, we have... Uh, we are within a week or so, I think, of Spectrum coming and getting us Wi-Fi in the building, which I know a lot of people are uh, looking forward to being able to have when we're there. Uh, and we've ordered, uh, we now have some tables and chairs in the building, and we've placed our order for uh, the chairs we'll use for our worship services that are padded and comfortable uh, that uh, we can make rows out of and move around however we want. So those should also be coming within the next uh, week or so. They thought we might have them as early as uh, this coming Friday. If not, it'll be the beginning of next week. And all of our kitchen appliances are scheduled, uh, did Dustin say it was like the 5th, uh, the 7th or the 9th, something like that. Uh, sometime next week is the ship date for all of those appliances. So we should get those, I would guess, uh, in the building and being ready to be installed the beginning of next week as well. So we are coming down to uh, the wire here, uh, getting these last few things done on uh, Tuesday, Canton Road Greenhouse has marked out and flagged all of where our, it's 40 some uh, pine trees and a few maples that will be along the back side of the building. Uh, the south and east sides of the building call for those and the plants. Uh, so they will be coming and putting all of those trees in the ground for us on Tuesday. Cad Walters, did I see a hand up from you? Yes. Can you put out the word that the children's program, the children's virtual program will start next Sunday? Sounds good. Yes, I have an email list of all the families and we'll send that out to uh, remind them all that it starts next Sunday. Okay, thank you. Very good. All right. I can take any other questions or concerns at this time. <laughs> any other announcements I'm missing? Debbie, uh, Donna, anybody? You know, I would like to go ahead and share that uh, we, we had such, so much conversation when we first put in the landscaping. And for those who have not had a chance to drive by, there was a lot of concern when we first put it in about what was going to live and what was not. And I need to tell you that the rose bushes, when we first put them in, lost all their petals. But they <laughs> yeah. are now flourishing and blooming and there are flowers all over. Um, so most of that landscaping is popping right back the way it should have. And it's beautiful. So I thought you might want that update. 
yeah, on that note, I want to say, too, thanks to all the folks who have showed up for the water brigade. Uh, we filled in all the gaps when we didn't have enough rain, and uh, we were able to get some good days of rain and soaking in there as well. And I think we got them through the end of the summer dry season, and now hopefully we're into uh, a little bit cooler weather and some on and off days of rain here. So I think we've we've done a good job uh, getting them through. But, yes, they all looked a little... Uh, hurt at first there you go but now they're perking right back up so i uh, do a drive by if uh if you want to see all those beautiful plants all right any other uh thoughts questions or concerns as we move forward well very good well thanks for sticking with me as uh i indulged uh, uh my desire to want to dive into the Good Samaritan parable over these last few weeks. I hope there were a few things that stood out that you had not heard or that we all needed to be reminded of. Next week, we'll start something new. How about that? May God bless you in this week as we all journey to be as good of neighbors as we can be in this calling to live in the way of Jesus. May we be blessed. May you be blessed as we do so.